Welcome back to the 512 design. The next segment is segment 3. We're going to design the waterfall kitchen island that you see here in the rendering. So to do this we're going to create the cabinets on the front side or the sink side and then we'll move around to the back and then we'll actually create the waterfall aspects to the island. So let's go ahead and get into the program and get started. I have the program open in split screen mode. I'm going to do most of the design work on the plan view side of the screen and I'm going to place the items so that you can see them to begin with all of the appliances and fixtures and then when we finish up we'll rotate the island and position it. First thing I want to do is set the defaults for my cabinet. I place this and over in my 3D view I'm going to use the color off of the dark wood, apply that to the body of the cabinet, select the color off of the white countertop and apply that onto the countertop. One last thing I'm going to do is open up this cabinet and make it have a flat back because I'm going to be putting some of the cabinets back to back and that will help in joining the cabinets. Now that I have those settings in place I'm going to make this cabinet a default cabinet simply by clicking the default tool and now all subsequent cabinets that I place will take up those defaults. Let's go ahead and zoom in here on both sides. I want to take this cabinet and make it 36 inches. That will be used for the sink base. Let's go ahead and open that up and remove the drawer off of it. Select OK. Next I'm going to place two 24 inch cabinets adjacent to the 36 and on the cabinet here on the right let's go ahead and make this a pull-out area remove the bottom door remove the bottom opening and now that is a giant pull-out and in the label notice the label in here still says B24 I like to change the label on these so let's go ahead and specify the label as a PO and you'll notice some macros over here and let's put in a width so that way if I change the pullout it will automatically dynamically update that label for me so it won't be out of date. Next let's place uh, another cabinet off to the edge here and with this cabinet Let's select it and I want to change this to be a bank of drawers so let's change that bottom item to a drawer and then just above that let's add a new drawer 8 inches is a good number and finally on the uh, width let's go ahead and change that to be 18 inches select OK and now I can just bump that into place I'm going to take that same bank of drawers, use the copy tool in the bottom of your menu and reflect it around the center cabinet. And then on the two edges I'm going to put a filler since the waterfall countertop will come down and I want to avoid the drawers possibly being in a position where they might rub on that. So I'm going to choose our filler here and place one of these fillers on the end, open that up and set the width of the filler to just a one inch. We'll snap that filler to the edge, copy that and reflect it around the center. I use copy reflect a lot, it's a tool that I find quite handy. Let's begin the cabinets on the back side of the island. I still have this base filler selected. I'm going to shift select the end filler and then the center cabinet. Use the copy tool, reflect it around the back of the cabinets. Looks like I missed uh, the center cabinet. Let's copy that and reflect it around the back. And with these three items selected, let me double click and open them up. First thing is, is I want to set the depth of these to be 12 inches and I'm going to have the overhang set to be 15 inches. That will allow the seating to be extended underneath of the countertop. Select OK. 
and on this center cabinet here I'm going to resize that to be a 30 inch cabinet bump it to the edge and now I'm going to use my copy tool and let's actually use the multiple copy tool and I'm going to set that to make three additional copies there's a tool down here evenly distribute set that to be three and I'm just going to come in here and uh, snap that into place looks like I may be off a little bit so we'll just snap that back into place now the last component on the island itself is to create the waterfall and I'm going to use our custom countertop tool to do that effect that you see here in the uh, rendering so let me zoom in on this side and underneath the cabinet tools is a custom countertop and let's just come in here roughly and uh, create the shape of that and the first thing I want to do let me turn on my temporary dimensions let me highlight that and I'm going to set that to be 1.5 inches which will match the thickness of that and let's just go ahead and snap that into place on the uh, top and bottom now let's open up that countertop and there's no cabinet underneath of it so I'm going to remove the check mark here for set height from cabinet and the thickness of the cabinet is going to be 36 inches that will then extend that down to the floor below I'm going to grab that countertop that we just created copy it and reflect it around the sink base here and put it on the other side let's maximize our 3D view and now what I want to do is go into the library and place some of the uh, fixture items in here. Inside the library I have my favorites catalog and I save uh, certain things that I use frequently in here. In my kitchen short list let's grab a uh, dishwasher and let's just place that on the front of the cabinet. The way dishwashers work in Chief Architect is they actually replace the cabinet and the advantage of that is it doesn't require you to draw a custom countertop over the top of it. If I go back in, let's split our screen again, you'll notice that uh, my labels are dynamic. That label changed for dishwasher and when I place the sink in here, notice this is B36. We'll come down here and I'll find a sink. Let's get one without a faucet and when I click on the cabinet for the sink, notice that the label automatically changed they're dynamic and let's place our faucet let's place that in our plan view and let's see if I can find our faucet right here let's place that right here you'll notice that uh, that placed if you don't want to see the, uh, the labels on those things you can open up the layer properties and just simply turn off the uh, fixture labels and remove that from being displayed. Next step with the island is let's just draw a marquee around the components rotated into place and then let's use our dimension tool you'll notice I have a temporary dimension and I can click on that and if I want to type in a value I can easily type that in and I can also use my dimension tool if we use our dimension tool end to end let's double click on that there's a locate tab here and you'll notice that I can choose what it, the dimensions will locate that way it's gonna best position my dimensions for me so let's just draw a uh, dimension line in here and you can see it picked up the countertop there and in this case it probably picked up the edge of the refrigerator and I'm going to move that out to the end of the stove let's go ahead and slide that dimension off to the side here and let's go ahead and add one more dimension from the edge of this countertop to the edge of this countertop again let's zoom in you can see that it actually went to the inside of that cabinet countertop and if we highlight just draw a marquee around this cabinets here now I'm going to highlight that dimension type in 36 from my walkway and then I'll highlight this dimension over here and we'll just set that to be 45 inches and now I can exactly position that island where I want it in addition to the dimensions let's explore how to create a kitchen triangle 
CAD detail. So I've selected the line tool out of the menu above and I'm just going to draw a triangle in here and I'm going to grab these uh, components and let's snap that to the center of the sink, center of the cook range, and approximately where the center of the refrigerator is. So there's our triangle. Let's open that triangle up and one of the things I want to do is on the line style, first of all let's change that to match the cabinet style. So let's just come over here and uh, grab the particular style for that and on the fill style let's use an angled hatch. Again let's pick that up off of the boxes itself and make that transparent. And then on the line style I'm going to choose show length. When you're finished now you can see what those lengths are and use that as a guideline to make sure you have the optimum triangle. For the elevation information, I'm going to use a cross-section tool. There is no wall here and we'll create a complete section through that. You can see the section. I have the flat ceiling. Again, if you want to use your dimension tools, let's go ahead and um, change this uh, annotation back. so it's using cabinet elevations and I can just cut my dimensions through here and you've seen how we did our dimensions earlier let me just show you what this looks like completed when we finish the ceiling so this is our completed section shows all the way up to the ceiling with the skylights and actually the framing trusses that we inserted the skylights in between you can get a better look at these construction drawings on the uh, website chiefarchitect.com. You can download this plan set when it's available and you can see all of the details for yourself. As we near the end of the island creation, let's add our seating. In the library, I'm going to search for a Bellini stool and position one of those near the edge here. Let's go ahead and rotate that into position using the copy tool, let's actually use a multiple copy tool, we'd still had that making three different copies, we'll just roughly create that and once I'm finished with this island, would we take uh, maybe uh, 10 minutes or so to create this, I'm going to save this into my library, so I'm just going to draw a marquee around the elements, block that, there's a block tool down here in the lower section of your screen, make an architectural block, and then I'm going to add that into my library, give it a name, and now I can easily place that out of the library. If we come over here and uh, place that uh, element in here. Notice that uh, the label style is a little different on the uh, cabinets that I've changed. Let's uh, go in and find a few more furnishing items that we've added into the library for our kitchen and then we'll wrap it up. So notice that uh, in my catalog here one of the things that I do is I name my projects I remember what they typically are by client name or project name and then that way I can save some of those items so it's easier for me to recall a specific island by a project or client name. So I've added some of the seating in here. Let's grab a uh, breakfast table, place that into our design, slide that over, and I've also should have my living area in here. Grab that and place that off to the side as well. Rotate that around and then we can maximize our 3D view and take a look at the way that looks. So pretty easy to add your seating and uh, any other element that you have. Just simply block those, add them into your library, build up your portfolio, and uh, you can create great looking elements like, uh, like this kitchen. Let's move on and uh, create our uh, different ceiling styles for the kitchen and explore how that works.